Welcome to the Dental Marketing Podcast, a podcast that helps dentists win in the online world of modern day marketing. Each week, we cover the most cutting edge marketing tactics and strategies that are working right now across our client base to drive leads, phone calls, and more new patients for dentists. Now, here's your host and founder of Kickstart Dental Marketing, Chris Pistorius. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the No BS Dental Marketing Podcast. I am your host, Chris Pistorius. And on this show, we talk about straight to the point, no BS tactics, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your practice. Now, there's no fluff here. There's just great information that you can start using today to increase, to help increase your bottom line. So if you're a dental practice owner, a manager, a front desk professional, or really whatever, just be sure to click the subscribe button below or somewhere on this page so that you can make sure you keep up with all of our episodes and tips and tricks. So today I've got two great guests for us. Um, I've got uh, Dr. Stephen Cohen and Dr. Mike Kotecki. Um, They own and run Um, two very successful orthodontic practices in Philadelphia, as well as in Centerton, New Jersey. Guys, uh, welcome to the show and thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my audience, kind of like what we talked about in the pre-show are, are, you know, they're dentists, they're orthodontists or some sort of specialists and, you know, they're running businesses. And, you know, like I talk about a lot, especially younger dentists coming out of school, uh, dental school, I think does a great job, obviously, of creating really good dentists and orthodontists and whatnot. But sometimes they don't always teach us how to run a business, right? And, and how to be successful when you go run your own practice. And so this podcast really wants to expose some of that and give people just real life worldly tips and tricks on how they can be successful if they make that choice to run their own practice. So if you guys could maybe just give me a little background on, on yourselves and just how you got started with the, with these practices. Um, so I'll start. Uh, I started uh, with uh, an older orthodontist back in 1994. That was in Philly. So I saw an opportunity to integrate with an existing practice, with their, which I think is, a, is, is still a really good model. Um, and then later on, I had an opportunity to start from scratch, which was really scary because you don't have any patient base at all. So that opportunity to start a practice was really scary. Uh, I used all of the skills that I learned because you had mentioned dental school. Dental school and orthodontic residency program doesn't prepare us for the real world, unfortunately. So I had a really good mentor uh, that kind of guided me. And then the main aspect was treating people well. So our patients became, uh, I guess, the lifeblood of the practice. And then also the dentist that would refer those patients to. So I think really good communication helped foster a really good uh, uh, practice mantra that other colleagues really uh, kind of bought into that uh, it was a good place for their patients so they would continue to refer. Um, Mike is in a, is in a different uh, kind of uh, spectrum, so to speak, in terms of coming in, he might offer some different views. So I'll let you uh, chime in there, Mike. Yeah, sure. So I uh, graduated dental school in 2016 um, from Columbia. I was on the Army scholarship, so did uh, a couple of years down in Georgia in the Army as a general dentist. Uh, you definitely don't have to market at all <laughs> in the <laughs> Army. Your patients are uh, they're scheduled and they're coming. Uh, they, that's their orders, so they're coming. Um, but yeah, then, uh, after that did residency at Einstein, um, for orthodontics, that's where I met, uh, Dr. Cohen. Um, thing that stood out really to me with his practice was the technology, kind of the modern, uh, way of approaching orthodontics. Mm. Uh, I got to hear him lecture at one of our meetings talking about 3d printing, digital orthodontics. And I was just like, mine was blown. And that's, um, I'm sure we'll get into that a little more, but that's kind of where, uh, where I started and, and where I'm at now. 
Gotcha. That's awesome. So, you know, you guys and, and Dr. Cohen, how long have you been in business on your own now? Since 94. Okay. 94. So I graduated residency program uh, <laughs> probably on a Friday and went to work on a Monday. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. No rest for the weary. So it's been a little while. Right. So I guess for both of you, if I'll ask you both this question, you know, there's a lot of dentists and, and orthodontists out there that are fine just working for somebody else, right? Um, what is it about you that made you want to make that decision to run your own practice? Uh, you know, I never envisioned myself working for someone else. I, I think there was always a goal uh, in school that you would have your own office. So, uh, and, you know, people talk about the golden age of practice. People talk about it being over. You know, is it done? The, certainly the dynamics of the profession are changing, just like the dynamics of uh, any other business change through time. Um, but I always knew that I wanted my own, my own thing. So from early on, I tried to affiliate with someone that I thought was going to be at the uh, end of their uh, life expectancy so that I can kind of assume that. And starting my own practice was almost, uh, I didn't really consider it. It was just an opportunity where a building became available in the town where I live. And uh, I said, if I don't do this, someone else will. So I did it. I don't regret it. But two headaches, or I don't want to say two headaches, two offices, two sets of responsibilities. Uh, I've heard colleagues talk about, you know, it's two sets of headaches. They want to um, minimize that. Me, I, I looked at that as, as opportunities. Was there an opportunity to uh, improve, grow? You don't know at the time unless you you take that opportunity. One, one door closes, one, one window opens. Yeah, so how, and I'll get right back to you, Mike, but what, yep. um, how long was it between the time you opened your first office and your second? Uh, it was about 12 years. Okay, so it took about 12 years to get to that second location. Okay, yeah. and then Mike, tell me why do you want to yeah. be, I mean, why, what, what, what is it about ownership for you um, that really wants to take you that path in your career. Yeah, I think, I think for me, you know, I, I did a year, uh, year off before I started dental school, and then I was in the okay. army. So, I'm 34 when I get out of school. I'm watching yeah. all my friends, you know, have babies and be making money for those 12 years while I'm still in school. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was, you know, I wanted to get into ownership right away and. Just have that autonomy, being able to practice how I want, when I want, and uh, just be able to lead a team. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Cohen, what would you change? I mean, say, you know, you, you come out, you start your own practice. You said there was a building available, so you took it. What would you change in that first couple of years if you had to do it all over again right now? Oh, gosh. I guess uh, another way I could put it is, did you make any critical mistakes in that your first year or two figuring it out that if you could tell somebody – don't do this or this. <laughs> you know, um, I, I've approached I, I've approached life uh, in practice almost the way Wayne Gretzky said is, you know, the, the shot not taken is the shot not missed or some variation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure I've made a lot of uh, mistakes along the way, but, you know, they're, they're not uh, mission critical. Okay. They're, you know, I, I'm not a a significant risk taker. Could I have taken out a significant loan? Sure, I could have in, in 06, took out a loan uh, and done some grand stuff. And then we all know that the economy fell out in 07. And, you know, orthodontists were opening up their offices and, and there were tough times. I didn't want to do that. I think what was important to me um, was being able to spend time with my family, that would be the biggest regret, I think, uh, in this whole process. Practice owners typically get joined to their practice. If I were to say married to it, you're married to it. So there are some things that get sacrificed along the way. 
Uh, and I wish, and I, I did do a really good job. There were times where uh, I spent more time with my kids and then my wife was working and then I was working a little bit less until the right opportunities start to, to fall into place. Um, I don't think I would change that. I just wish I maybe I had more time in the day that I could accomplish all the tasks. Yeah. It seems like there's a, a never ending inbox. You know, if we had 28 hours in a day, that would be perfect for me because I'm either, I'm either the, the fish that's swimming or I'm asleep. So I just need more time in a day. That'd be the only thing that I would want to repeat. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you there. I know, I know how you feel with that. Um, Dr. Kotecki, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of, you know, we've, we represent a few dentists here at, at Kickstart and I've worked with several that have come from the military background. And I think that's interesting for a lot of people that'll be watching this that are maybe thinking about even just getting into dentistry or starting dental school. Why the military for you? Why the army option? Why did that work for you? Yeah, so um, my cousin was doing ROTC for the Marines at the time when I was applying to dental school and that kind of inspired me. I had a few, you know, family members in the military and, you know, interested in, in serving my country. And um, I also just felt like the training I was going to get in there was just going to be top notch, which it was. Um, the mentorship, the training, um, the leadership. It's just, yeah, I'd recommend anyone to do it. Honestly, you, you know, you come out of school debt free, yeah. you get great training. The facilities are unbelievable. You know, you come out of dental school, you know, you're cleaning your own chairs and everything. All of a sudden I've got my own two chairs with my own two assistants in this beautiful off, you know, location, like amazing. So I definitely recommend anyone do it. The leadership, I was in charge of um, infection control at my base. So mm. we've got five dental clinics, probably 60 dentists and I'm right out of school and they just give me this job. I'm in charge of infection control and I got to figure out how to do that for the whole, the whole base. And just what I learned from doing that and the leadership and everything like that was, was invaluable. So yeah, definitely that's awesome. That did that. Well, thank mm -hmm. you for your service, by the way. I don't know if I'd oh, said thanks. that yet, but it's, you know, I have the utmost respect for um, anybody in the military. And so um, I think that's a very um, honorable and respective way to go about um, becoming any sort of a professional, much less a dentist. So um, incredible story. Yeah, um, Dr. Dr. Cohen, I, I, 12 years goes by and you decide at some point, it's time to do this again. Let's have a, let's have another practice. And I'm sure there's some, you know, financial motivation behind that. You know, obviously that opens up another profit center for a practice like you. Um, but was that your main motivation? What was, what was your thinking there on, okay, I've done this 11 years. I'm ready to open another one. Um, no, it was almost, it was probably less of a uh, profit, believe it or not. And it was a really difficult decision because, uh, at the time when I was associated with the first orthodontist in Philadelphia, I was program director at, at Einstein's residency program where Dr. Pateki and I met and I still teach. So it required me stepping down and making that really difficult decision, not a transition, but a decision because I really enjoy academics. I really enjoy interacting and I enjoy teaching. So um, I looked at it almost like setting up a, a life plan or, or a transition. I live about a mile and a half from the office, you know, I'm kind of like the town uh, orthodontist. It's it's really small. So if I were to say the town doctor, there's probably only there's a family practice, and then I'm like the other doctor that's there. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that was going to be a, a significant change. It, it was it was kind of circumstances. It seemed like the right thing to do when you when you trust your gut. Um, so that's. That's why I decided to, uh, to, to do it, but it was, it was a tough decision. It wasn't an easy one. Yeah. Um, and I still kind of motivated, motivated myself to be involved with academics and the practice, which I guess if I went back to the question, if I could do anything differently, if I could have perfected cloning myself, that would have been another, another opportunity where I could be everywhere and be the yeah. same guy. 
Yeah, no, totally understand that for sure. Um, let's talk about partnerships. Um, you know, I do get asked from time to time on, you know, some of our clients that run their own practice, they get lonely sometimes and they just, they feel like that it, it's good to have a partner in business to be able to run things by and get feedback and, you know, kind of have that ownership relationship, right? And maybe you guys could both fill me in on, on your guys' partnership, how you, I think you said you met in, in some more academic way, but how did you guys both know that maybe working together was going to be a good fit for you? And, and Dr. Cohen, you had already established this practice. I mean, why did you feel like you needed, needed that? So I'll go first and then uh, Dr. Kateki could go. So <laughs> You know, I, I was always motivating residents to make sure they had their uh, resumes out and, and what opportunities existed. And then I just said, don't forget the old guy in the corner. And that was, I think that may have been the pretext for, you know, like you, you're, you're not old. <laughs> but that aspect of uh, a, a togetherness, you know, bouncing things off. Yeah, I, I've been in charge of my own world for a long time and you make your own decisions. I view it as a, a refreshing opportunity because I'm still learning. I'm learning every day. So I learn from Dr. Kateki, you know, he learns, he learns from me and that, uh, that cliche, two heads are better than one. I think it's a, a tremendous, again, opportunity to, uh, to blast off. And I would definitely encourage, I would encourage doctors in the same position, let's say at their life, to, to consider that. Some of us are control freaks. Uh, yeah. And I say some of us because I'm including myself in that. And there's a, there's a tremendous amount of restraint. I think that you have to, you have to have to relinquish some of that control. But when you do, it allows things to kind of blossom. And that's what I look at in terms of that opportunity. Yeah, for me, I mean, yeah, I remember when he said that uh, old guy's in the corner, <laughs> don't forget about me. Um, and you're not old. Um, I mean, yeah, I was, you know, you're coming out of residency, you're seeing six patients a day. And then you're all of a sudden the next week, you're seeing 60 patients a day or 100 yeah. patients a day, or whatever it is. Like, you need some mentor, or at least I thought it felt like I need a mentorship along that process. So, um, luckily, Dr. Cohen said that that day, and um, <laughs> it's been great. Honestly, like like today, we're in different offices. We each are seeing patients in each office for half a day, um, and then some days we're together. And just those days when we're together, and all the chairs are full, and we're bouncing back and forth, and we're talking about patients. It's just awesome to like be doing that together, learning from each other. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's, that's incredible to have a partnership that, you know, and, and not all partnerships work, right? I and mean, that's just the way that's the way human nature is. But, you know, you guys certainly seem like, you know, <laughs> you, you guys seem like you both have good temperaments about it. And, and, you know, it's, you know, it's a difficult decision to make when you go into to a partnership. But I think compatibility is, you know, a huge thing. And especially with you guys having some history that that definitely helps mm -hmm. as well. Are you looking to grow your practice, but are a little unclear on what the best way is? Let us help you out. We have over 13 years of experience in helping practices just like yours increase new patient growth. Just go to kickstartdental.com and sign up for a free strategy session where we will give you some great insights on how to take your practice to the next level. Um. You know, what I guess for both of you, what I want to ask is what's one piece of advice that you would give to somebody um, that's thinking of opening their own practice? What, what would be the number one thing you would have them think about first? So for, for me, I would, I would approach things uh, maybe slightly differently rather than looking at opportunities, uh, demographics, opportunity for growth, 
Um, I would look less in terms of areas of, let's say, affluence, and I would look at need. You know, the the and how I say that is we're we're practicing in the Northeast, and the Northeast is saturated, but there are still uh, practices that are starting and being taken over. You know, if you want less competition, go to less competitive areas. There was one time when I was looking at at uh, opportunities and while you're in school at, at one meeting, guy said, you know, you got to move to the Midwest, Dr. Cohen. And, you know, I don't know anyone in the Midwest, but he said, you know, Michigan's looking for, for practices. And uh, I'm envious of the individuals that just pack up and move. I wasn't one of those individuals. I was kind of like, all right, you know, I want to be here. Um, but I, I would say, look at demographics, look at maybe areas that could potentially be underserved and you might have a greater opportunity to have a little bit more of a jump start to be successful. And if you were taking over a practice, I would say communication, you gotta have really good communication from the very beginning. Talking about things almost ensures your success. If you can't talk, you're, you're going to fail. Awesome. Yeah, I'd agree. Definitely agree with all that. And kind of along those lines, if it's just somewhere where you can really feel like a part of that community, like centered in, like Dr. Cohen said, it's a small town and we're like the small town orthodontist. Everybody knows everybody. Our assistants know everybody. Our assistants' friends are coming in, their nieces, their nephews. You know, in South Philly, that's a small, kind of a small town within a big city. Um, I'm right up the street from this office. Dr. Cohen's right up the street from that office. Um, just getting that like community feel, I think really helps spread the word and, um, will help you get a good start. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap up with one question that nobody really likes when I do this. And that's why I didn't prepare you guys for it. Just so <laughs> keep you on edge a little bit, but I'm on to you both to answer this. Um, what's one question that you wish I would have asked you today and how would you have answered it? It's a tough one, huh? Where's my Jeopardy music. You got one, Mike? I got one. All right, go ahead. Uh, it would be you know, what separates you from other offices. Hmm. And I that's would a good say, one. Put that on my list. This is why I asked that. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me ideas. <laughs> Should I answer it? or? Oh, or please, like please. <laughs> yes. Um, so it goes back to the technology. I think that I mentioned at the very beginning, um, you know, we're 3D scanning, CBCT, um, we're printing all our own aligners, using U Labs, moving all our own teeth, um, 3D printing night guards, like whatever the latest thing is, we're doing it, we're trying it. And uh, I think the patients really appreciate that. And, and it's, just, it's just really cool. Do you think, I wanna expand on that a little bit. Do you think marketing wise, and when you're talking with patients that, you know, like even when front desk people answer the phones and just ask questions or answer questions, do you mm -hmm. think it's important to talk about the technology side of, of, of your industry? Yeah. And we've been trying to do that more. I mean, yeah. Ever since I started where the, the spiel is always like, you know, we don't do the goopy molds anymore. Remember those mom, when you got braces, yeah. like here's our 3d scan lately, we've been doing our three shape scan at the beginning and just today i'm doing a consult and then i've got touch screen laptop i'm looking we're looking at the yeah. models and you just see like their eyes light up um, yeah i think it's important to talk about especially mm -hmm. in your industry with the parents hey remember when we used to do it this way well this is what it's the, how it's changed so you're you're putting that technology kind of into layman's terms that yeah. anybody you know like myself would be able to understand so right and yeah. lately like we're doing that the next level, I, I guess, is kind of like, remember Invisalign? Now we're doing it all ourselves, controlling everything ourselves, printing it here in the basement. So if you need a new tray, give us a call. We'll make one that day. So that kind of a thing is what we're really trying to, to talk about more. 
Yeah. And Steve, I'm not letting you off the hook. So what's, what's, what's the end? What's your answer? <laughs> um, all right. So do you want me to answer Dr. Kotecki's uh, question? No, or, do you have a, do you have a question? Own. Do you have an example? Yeah. Uh, how would you grade your success? Mm, that's so a good one. I, I think a lot of us do focus on uh, dollars. And, and, you know, I, I think that most dentists, most orthodontists, specialists, we're all, we're all successful. We, do, we all do okay financially. I think that my, my greatest success is being privileged to have a, a good reputation. Mm. So yeah. uh, I think of that the most because that carries you during the really good times. It carries you during the challenging times. Mm -hmm. uh, and how you build your reputation is by taking a lot of what Dr. Kotecki mentioned in terms of we use all this technology. I view it as fun. It's mm. keeping it alive. But we're using that technology really to enhance the patient experience, which then comes back to our reputation. So, you know, patients know where their care can be trusted, where they, where they can go. They're going to know when they're getting the best care possible. And not just us, but any practice. You have to embrace the technology that's available. That's the stuff that costs money. That's where you're going to end up taking your loans out, but that's going to enhance your reputation. It's going to enhance your overall patient experience, and then it's going to build your, your reputation. So don't just look at the financials as we come to the end of the year. And I look at the financials, but I also have to be reminded of how, how, how good it's been. Yeah. That's great. That's a, that's a great piece of advice. Um, that was awesome. Um, we're going to wrap this up and I'd love to maybe reconnect with you guys in a few months and just get updates and, you know, just kind of see how things have changed for you at all. And has how 2023 is going, if that's okay with you. Sounds great. Awesome. Sure. Well, thanks again, guys, for being on. I appreciate your time. Um, looking forward to a great 2023 for you. And everybody else, thanks so much for listening in today. If, uh, if you like today's episode, please do hit that subscribe button. Uh, we release a new episode like this every week um, to help busy dental professionals like you and to help you get the most out of your practice. Or if you're thinking about starting your own practice, as you, got, as you learned today, there's lots of great advice that, that you can get from people. So appreciate everybody watching. Thank you so much. And we'll be sure to see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us this week on the Dental Marketing Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, www.kickstartdental.com slash podcast, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Spotify, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. If you are ready to grow your practice, then you might want to schedule a free strategy session with us. Just go to kickstartdental.com and click the free strategy session button and give us 15 minutes of your time to change your practice forever. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode. And thanks for listening to the Dental Marketing Podcast by Kickstart Dental Marketing, where dentists go to win online.